Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Ladi Williams. First off, let's look at how your money is performing at intraday. Starting uh, with the African uh, markets there, we see uh, the NGX there uh, marginally uh, in the green. Right there behind me, 0.07%. Uh, and South Africa GSE index there, it's also up 0.78% uh, at intraday. Let's look at what's happening uh, with North Africa there. We see Egypt did close yesterday up 1.41%. And uh, Kenya there, uh, the Kenya uh, both there closing down 0.19% uh, yesterday. All right, now let's uh, get uh, analysis of what's happening at intraday. Right there, we have uh, Abdul Latif Grillo, investment research analyst with Maristem uh, Securities. Join us uh, via Zoom. Great to have you on the program. Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. All right, uh, how's the market looking at intraday? So presently, intraday, we are seeing more of buying activities in the markets. And if you look at what we have seen in the market earlier this week up till today, you note that we have seen more of sell-offs in the market. About three out of four days so far, the market has closed down. So today's the last trading day of the week is basically just investors cherry picking on some of the stocks they find attractive before we go into the weekend. So we are seeing more buying activities today, and the market is up marginally. And uh, Anita did predict that we might uh, close in the green. Uh, today, but we're looking out for that. But what are, who are the market movers uh, right now? So we are seeing most of the buying interests um, on financial services um, stocks, the likes of Mansard, Union Bank, and Jetico. And across other sectors, um, there are still buying interest on some stocks which investors find quite attractive at this point. The um, Nigerian bureaus is up, intraday, Vita Form is up, international bureaus is also up. And uh, let's uh, look at your forecast now for the close of trade today. Is it uh, tending towards the bulls or the bears? So um, for the close of market today, it's very much likely that we are going to see the, the bulls. Um, um, have the, the, it's very much likely that we are going to see the markets close like in favor of the bulls to close up. Because it's not like we're not seeing some sell-offs in the market or profit taking in the market also. But if you look at the the weight of as uh, the amounts that they are losing also in the market it doesn't it doesn't favor the bs so much so we are seeing likes of ico fitting access grants then it's lose very marginally so it's very much likely that the market will close in the positive and also if you look at some other heavyweight tickers that um we have seen decline in trade the, the um, quantity traded on these stocks is not enough to move their prices. The likes of Nestle, Botan, Okomo, oh. all right. Well, final trading day uh, for the week uh, today. What stocks are you watching, you know, right now going into next week that could, you know, outperform the market? Okay. So for stocks that are um, likely to outperform the market, so I'll still say... Um, Maybe investors will possibly keep their eyes on financial services or financial services stocks. These stocks have been undervalued for a long while now, and it seems like some investors are starting to see value in these stocks and taking position on some of them. You notice that the, our market is largely driven by the financial services sector, and um, investors continue to take position on those tickers. We also, I also will not rule out the fact that investors will not take position on some um, everyday tickers that have declined significantly in the past weeks. The, uh, maybe from the telecommunication sector and industrial goods sector or majorly financial services tickers. All right, we'll be watching out. Uh, next week is, uh, is close already. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Abdul Latif Grillo, investment research analyst with Mary Stem Securities. Thank you. All right, now let's uh, flip over to the Middle East. Let's look at what's happening there. We see it uh, in the UAE. Seen the markets there in the green, but uh, other markets we track there uh, are closed. Abu Dhabi there up 0.40% at 10,466 points. And we see the Dubai index 3,852 points. That's also up uh, about over half a percent. Let's look at other parts we track. They're closed as Qatar and Saudi Arabia. We see Qatar there closed uh, down 0.08% yesterday, a marginal uh, dip there. Saudi Arabia also closed uh, down 0.63% yesterday. All right, let's uh, head on to Europe now. See, German companies could be facing 
a regular stress test regarding their China exposure and government officials are uh, explicitly warning of investments in uh, just Chinese investment with German ports. Now, the communist leadership in Beijing is reacting to the reports, and we have uh, Chris Koba right there with the details. Great to have you, Chris. So what exactly have officials in Beijing uh, been saying? They're pretty outraged, at least that's what the wording of a statement by the Chinese Foreign Ministry suggests. According to the German news agency DPA, the statement reads that Beijing rejects China's denigration by Germany through, quote, so-called human rights issues, as well as lies and rumors, as the Chinese put it, labeling China as a systemic competitor and rival, as the draft strategy report apparently does, would be an inheritance of Cold War thinking. The 59-page so far secret report, from which German media nevertheless have been quoting, states that upholding human rights is to have a significant impact on future economic relations uh, between Germany and China. Economic development and human rights do not oppose each other. It says in the report, which has been drafted by the foreign ministry and which will now be fine-tuned with other ministries that are involved in foreign and security policy matters. The report paints a rather grim picture of the communist leadership in Beijing and its policies. It states, quote, massive human rights violations against Uyghurs in the Xinjiang province as well as in Tibet. Uh, the situation in Hong Kong, where Beijing enforced a brutal crackdown of the pro-democracy movement and China's increasingly aggressive rhetoric against Taiwan are also viewed as problematic. And the, the draft uh, strategy uh, report mentions Chinese investment in German ports are being particularly problematic. Why? Because ports are considered critical infrastructure and Chinese investment in these sectors uh, is increasingly being viewed as problematic as China is displaying a more assertive stance on the world stage. Uh, Germany is the world's fourth largest economy and its political leaders uh, like um, to suggest that they are uh, not giving China the opportunity to take advantage of the country. At the same time, trade between the two sides is huge. Uh, China is Germany's biggest trade partner, and harbors, of course, play a pivotal role here, which is highlighted just last month when German Chancellor Olaf Scholz pushed through a deal that saw Chinese shipping giant Costco buy a 24.9% stake of a terminal in the Hamburg port. Numerous ministries, along with intelligence experts, had advised against the deal. It would present an opportunity for Beijing to get a foot in the door and later expand its influence, experts argued. But pressure from the Chinese side, from local politicians, and from the Hamburg port itself that does most of its business with Costco on the chancellor, who is also a former Hamburg mayor, this pressure was big. And in the end, Costco was allowed to buy a share just below the minority stake threshold. And it's exactly this uh, opinion of intelligence experts that the draft strategy report is building on now uh, when it's warning of Chinese investment in ports around the world. These could provide options, for mil options of military use in the long run, the foreign ministry says. Furthermore, the government plans to cap the size of foreign investment guarantees it is handing out to companies, meaning should factories or any other investment have to be abandoned because of war or expropriation, uh, the, government, uh, the German government will only stand up for 3 billion euros in total per country. Now, as of now, investment of German companies in China alone stands at around 29 billion euro. So now, this plan is part of the overall idea that Germany's dependence on China, just like with Russia currently, is to be lowered in the future rapidly, but at tenable costs to the German economy, which in itself does pose a challenge, along with the fact that as of now, a fair number of German companies active in China do not see any urge at all to change that. All right, Chris, but, but how are the markets uh, looking in Europe? 
Uh, better than some might have thought. Uh, markets mostly declined yesterday, with the DAX outperforming its peers uh, thanks to strong earnings figures by industrial conglomerate Siemens. And Germany's blue chips index is posting gains again today, up around half a percent uh, this morning. That is despite an official in the United States saying that the U.S. Federal Reserve may have to raise its benchmark interest rate much higher than it has previously projected to get inflation under control. All right, that was uh, Chris Koba there giving us uh, the details. Thank you so much, Chris, and enjoy the weekend. All right, now let's uh, move on to the USC stock futures rose as investors continued devaluating uh, earnings and, uh, rip and reports and uh, tougher language from Federal uh, Reserve speakers. Futures tied to the Dow Jones Industrial Average there. I see that behind me there, climbed by 0.43%. S&P 500 futures up 0.63% to 2,980 points. And we see the tech-heavy uh, Nasdaq still holding on to that 11,000-point level, 11,800, uh, up 0.83%. We'll be watching how uh, the market is close today. But for uh, a, a review of yesterday's uh, close, let's have our correspondent, Marie Bird. The U.S. stock market was down on Thursday, as the Dow Jones was down by 0.02%, the S&P 500 down by 0.31%, and the heavy tech Nasdaq was down by 0.35%. This is in direct response to what many investors thought was going to be a slowing down of interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve. But Recent information from the Federal Reserve Bank says that there will not be a slowing down, and we can expect to see that there will be interest rate hikes in the near future. This has many investors concerned, especially in the wake of many large tech companies having to cut on employees. It is expected Amazon will make an announcement regarding a cut of thousands of employees in the coming days. This will definitely have a direct impact on the U.S. economy even though it is showing that unemployment claims are down for the month of November. But we will continue to watch as there's continued to be impact on the U.S. economy. And that was our correspondent there, Marie Bird, giving us uh, yesterday's close for the U.S. markets. Uh, now oil gave up uh, early gains today. It was on track for a second weekly decline, pressured by concern about weakening demand in China and further interest rate arises by the U.S. Federal Reserve. China, which sources say is looking to slow crude imports from uh, some exporters, seen a rise in COVID-19 cases, while hopes for the moderation of aggressive U.S. rate hikes have been uh, dented by remarks from some Fed officials uh, this week. Brent crude was down 76 cents to $89, two cents a barrel, and touched a weekly low of $89.16 earlier. U.S. WTI crude was down about 41 cents at $81.23 per barrel. Both benchmarks are heading for a second weekly loss. Uh, Brent is on track for a decline of more than 7%, while WTI is down 8.7%. And gold prices edged up today on a pullback in the dollar, but were still bound for their first weekly decline in three, weighed down by signals from U.S. central bankers that more interest rate hikes were on the way. And we see spot gold rose 0.1% to $1,763.17 per ounce, uh, while the uh, U.S. gold futures were up 0.2% to $1,765. Gold continues to be supported by rising recession risk and the still evolving Ukraine war and the peaking of the U.S. dollar, and that's according to Fitch Solutions. Mozambique has officially started exporting liquefied natural gas. This LNG produced in the country's north is the first shipment of gas uh, under a long-term uh, purchase and sale contract with British giant BP. The offshore uh, plant located in the Cabo Delgado province is managed by Italian energy company ENI. Let's talk to Matt Kindergan, our practice leader, Software and Africa Frontier View, uh, to give us the expected economic impact. Uh, great to have you on the program. Hi, thanks for having me on the show today. So what does this first shipment mean for uh, Mozambique's economic growth outlook? Yes, yeah, so fundamentally, it's, it's a very positive for Mozambique's economic growth outlook. And this is because it will do a number of things, uh, and it will signal uh, a number of factors which will drive growth over the next couple of years. 
Firstly, it will be very positive for Forex revenues. So we expect to see the currency's uh, performance to improve, foreign currency availability uh, and foreign currency levels in the country will also improve. Uh, but it will crucially also uh, mark the start of a potentially very large fiscal or revenue windfall for the government. Uh, this is very important for Mozambique because since the, the country's default in 2017, uh, as a result of the tuna bond scandal, the country has effectively been shut out from international capital markets. So we do think this will begin to uh, help the government normalize relations with investors. Uh, there's also going to be um, a, a significant uh, improvement in uh, associated investments with the LNG industry. So we are going to see uh, companies looking to tap into the secondary industries that are associated with LNG, uh, especially in Cabo Delgado, but also the sort of related services industries in Maputo. In terms of the outlook for growth for Mozambique, we expect the, the exports, which have begun sooner than we previously expected, to raise growth to about 6% this year and potentially even 10% in 2024. Uh, and this is because uh, we're likely to see even more LNG proje projects which have been put on hold uh, over the last couple of years as a result of the insurgency in Cabo de Gado uh, to uh, come on stream over the next couple of years. So certainly we only expect Mozambique's growth prospects to improve. All right, but how soon will the uh, benefits of the gas production, you know, trickle down uh, to the wider Mozambican economy? Yeah, so this is the um, uh, big question because the uh, although gas production is, is extremely positive for exports, um, fiscal revenues, headline economic growth, Fundamentally, um, there are pockets of Mozambique which remain um, uh, very economically underdeveloped and uh, large portions of the population uh, are amongst some of the poorest in the world. So what we do expect to see um, is, firstly, the government will probably prioritise normalising its fiscal position and stabilising its public finances and improving relations with investors. Um, and this will take a, a number of years before it can meaningfully increase uh, investment and spending to raise standards of living of the population. Uh, we also have seen over the last couple of years uh, a number of companies withhold investment from the market because of the the default that's taken place. Uh, so uh, this this will have a lingering effect on um, economic activity in the non-extractives industries. And it's also worth remembering that the economic benefits of the gas production, LNG production, will be quite geographically limited. So uh, although there has been a frenzy of activity in Cabo uh, Delgado, where the gas is located, uh, and we are likely to also see associated improvements in activity uh, in business services in, Mo in Maputo, in the capital. Uh, the, the, the geographic impact of uh, LNG production will be very limited, and this is not least because of the uh, effects of the Cabo uh, Delgado insurgency that is taking place there, which is making investment into the broad region, for example, into infrastructure very limited. So for the time being, for the next couple of years, we likely see a fairly limited trickle-down effect on the economy beyond maybe the, the gas investments themselves and maybe public finances and economic activity in Maputo. And, and talking about the insurgency at the Cabo Delgado, how much of a risk does this uh, pose to Mozambique's economic outlook generally? So it, it, this is a very important question because it actually uh, derailed investment into gas uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic. So we did see a number of uh, gas companies, oil majors, withhold investment because of the uh, associated security risks. A couple of companies declared a force majeure. Our view is, however, that the, the government has more or less controlled the situation, at least around the LNG production facilities. So this means that we don't expect the insurgency to fundamentally derail growth. However, it does mean uh, that uh, the longer that the ins insurgency goes on for, uh, the worse that agriculture production, for example, in the, the center in the north of the country will become. Uh, there may also be very weak investor sentiment into non-gas industries. So or, although we do believe that the gas industry remains more or less insulated, uh, the fact that the insurgency continues and is very disruptive, especially in rural areas of the country, does mean that industries such as um, agriculture will will continue to struggle. So uh, uh, when we look at headline growth, probably not a significant impact, but when we look at the performance of specific industries, um, it, it is likely to have a continued impact, especially in the centre and the north of the country uh, right. for the foreseeable future. All right, we'll keep tracking that economy. Thank you so much. That was Matt Kinniger, practice leader at Sub-Saharan Africa at Front of You. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you, you too.
All right, now moving on to uh, other stories now. We see Nigeria is set to commence export of rice. And this comes as the Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria and Tamin Rice Company signed a memorandum of agreement for the processing and sale of rice domestically and abroad. In a statement released, the Deputy Managing Director of Tiamin Rice Company uh, said the program aims to cultivate high-quality rice uh, by Rifen, which uh, Tiamin will, will then uh, processes and packages using cutting-edge milling equipment for sale both locally and abroad, uh, particularly in Egypt. He explained that the MOU, which would be in effect for two years, was signed at the company's mill in Bochi State, which has a 600 metric ton per hour capacity. Leo further noted that Tiamin Rice Company was the first corporate body to utilize CBN funds from the private sector-led accelerated agricultural development scheme and has benefited from six different central bank of Nigeria development finance operations. And Ghana has announced an increase in the national daily minimum wage that will take effect from the beginning of 2023. Statement from the government says uh, the wage will rise by 10% to 14 uh, cities, uh, or $1 with effect from 1st of January next year. The country is currently negotiating $3 billion bailout plan from the International Monetary Fund aimed at stabilizing the economy. Ghana is the world's second largest cocoa producer and Africa's leading gold producer. However, the country is battling an economic crisis with a decline in currency and high debt levels. And the Kenyan shilling has hit a new record low against the U.S. dollar with an expected uh, further slump and continued external pressures. The local currency weakened to 122 shillings, uh, 6 cents on Thursday before slightly gaining to 122 shillings uh, today as demand for the dollar from the manufacturing and energy sectors showed little sign of abating. According to the currency trading solutions provider, is a finance uh, incoming funds from the International Monetary Fund are, however, expected to support the shilling. The government is expected to receive uh, $433 million from the IMF as part of the $2.34 billion loan facility agreed last year. Kenya's Central Bank Monetary Policy Committee in September raised the base uh, lending rate from 7.50% to 8.25% as part of measures to stabilize the shilling and address the rising inflation. And remittances from Egyptians working abroad recorded around $20.9 billion uh, throughout the January to August 2022 uh, from $21.4 billion in the same period last year. According to the latest report from the country's central bank, remittances uh, during uh, the financial year for 2020 and 2021 stood at $31.4 billion. The central bank added that in June this year, the remittances recorded around $2.8 a billion dollars from 2.9 billion dollars in the same month in 2021 and in August 2022 remittances stood around 2.2 billion dollars from 2.4 billion dollars in July. Meanwhile, Egypt's central bank says the country's net foreign reserves rose to around 33.41 billion dollars at the end of October from 33.197 billion dollars at the end of September, recording an increase of 214 million dollars. And South African power utility ESCOM is chasing up close to 1 billion rand in overdue payments from its Mozambique counterpart, Electricity uh, uh, EDM, uh, including uh, disputed amounts from 2019 as South Africa seeks to secure more electricity and gas uh, from the country. ESCOM revealed that the utility was uh, pursuing payments from Mozambique that does not have issues with its international clients, except for Mozambique with some uh, disputed amounts and then some agreed upon amounts that are not paid up. The power utility confirmed that the disputes relates to October 2019 to November 2019 invoices has come with a debt burden of more than 400 billion rand, uh, which the National Treasury had pledged to help with, is scrapping the bottom of the barrel for its uh, outstanding payments, including 52 billion rand it is owed by local municipalities. And that's it on Business Incorporated, and that's how your money performed at Intraday. Thank you so much uh, for watching. Enjoy the weekend. I'm Nadi Williams. Bye for now.